Hi hobby friends, let's finish this damn thing. In this box, aside from a big pile of Harlequin transfers and some other assorted stuff, I've got one whole enormous Wraith Knight, and he's been in this box for over a year. This Wraith Knight is older than my YouTube channel, or at least older than my regularly posting videos to this YouTube channel. I don't remember exactly when I got him, but he's been in there a while. It might not be completely clear on first inspection, but Tallboy here is fairly heavily modded, at least for me. He's been reposed into a slightly janky jogging stance, had a neck extension, had his jazz hand slightly unjazzed, and the biggest change is a slimming down of the silhouette and the transfer of that snazzy gem from his back to his front. As I say, all of that was completed before the channel existed, but it's basically like a pound shop version of the inimitable AR Hicks conversion that's pretty extensively documented on his blog, so check the link below for a how-to on, well, how-to. This wraith is so old it needs a good dusting down before we can even consider continuing, and when that's all done I need to confront past sins. I'm not a particularly skilled kit basher or model modder in the first place, and this project would probably be a little out of my league even now, so I really need to get in and clean up some of the mess past me left. Mostly, this involves adding material in the form of sprue goo and taking material away, either with the old back of the knife scrapey scrapey technique or some light sanding here and there. I've nicked these super fine buffing things off my husband, and they're doing a fine job of getting things as smooth as fresh plastic. These ones are all the way from Japan, which produces some of the best hobbying products out there, but if you search for file stick number 1000 where you are, you should probably find something equivalent. As always, I'm impatient to get started with the painting, so after an inadequate amount of cleanup, let's get this guy primed. I'm leaving the guns out of this round of priming, but after the legs, body and melee arms get a good coat of black Molotow paint, they also get another good coat of black Vallejo paint. I'm doubling down on my blacks here because Molotow is a good no-fuss primer, but the Vallejo paint has the finish I want. That's that, time now for some volumes. Vallejo Sombre Grey is probably my favourite hobby paint grey. I liked it so much I bought it twice and then got the airbrush version too. This is not a zenithal we're doing here, it's a volume sketch. Zenithals are great, but learning to use your airbrush with a little bit more control and trying to build each individual volume rather than a global spritz will help get you to that next level of painting. And of course, big giant minis like this make it a little bit easier. The first pass on the volumes is done, and now it's time to bump those highlights a bit. Go big or go home, as they say, so let's go with white. Yep, pure, uncut white ink for the second highlights on this black. I'm relying on good trigger control here to avoid going too over the top, but I do want to go a shade above what you might expect for a black paint job. We'll see why in just a sec. Or rather, right now, why not? I've loaded up with some turquoise deep ink here, and I've cut the ink this time with some matte varnish. I'm going to use this to add a little extra something to the black armour by glazing it into the shadows and mid-tones. This is why I wanted to take things up a little higher than a normal black highlight, so there would be space for the ink to bring the value back down again. Black, like white, is a real chameleon of a colour and will handle a chromatic shift in all sorts of directions, but for me here, because I know what other colours are coming, a nice ambiguous cool colour like turquoise works great. Let's tackle those pew 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 arms now. My base on these and the little leg, groin and butt armour plates is Molotow Burgundy. You'll notice I'm not priming everything though, just the main pew pew pewy bits and the inner workings of the guns. After the burgundy comes ochre brown light, acting as our first mid-tone, and when that's done, I go in with Sahara Beige Pastel. Spoiler alert, these, what are we calling them, tacits are my favourite bit of the whole paint job. 
Painting the bone bit of the Ulfway scheme used to be my least favourite part, but since landing on this recipe I love it. Ok, last colour for the bony bits now, and it's this natural white from Molotow. Just a little bit of this to punch up our highs here and there. And when all of that's done, everybody gets a good coat of gloss varnish. Keep your windows closed and your candles lit though, I'm not glossing the wraith in preparation for stinky combustible oil paint shenanigans. I have a very love-hate relationship with masking. On the one hand, it opens up even more exciting, cool options with the airbrush, which is a tool I love, in case you hadn't noticed. On the other hand, I feel like it always takes way too long, at least for any kind of detailed masking, and even though I'm sure I'm using the right tape and being careful, I still always manage to tear up a bit of paint somewhere. And that's what the gloss varnish is for this time. I'd like to try to protect my paint job so far. Silly Putty, by the way, is probably the best masking medium out there for organic shapes. Go out and treat yourself to a few eggs. With all that masking done, we can finally get back to painting, meaning repeating the step for the bone on the body and the black on the weapons. Small hitch though, I didn't like the bone on the upper chest and pauldrons. It made my wraith lad here look like he was wearing a sort of wraith vest, and although at the time of release it is mighty chilly outside, I reckon a simpler black look will look a little more chic. No worries though, a little careful airbrushing and we are back to black. Let's get some fancy glowy bits done now. We're starting with a general lift in value using thinned Tamiya White to sketch out our forms here. There are two main factors that dictate whether I reach for the Tamiya White and alcohol thinner, or the acrylic ink. One, how important is guaranteed smoothness, and two, how lazy am I feeling? Ink, generally, is faster and easier, but more prone to speckles, especially white. The Tamiya paint is slightly more of a hassle to prepare and clean, but it will get you super smooth results. Next up, I need to warm up this white, so into the airbrush goes yellow, and on goes a general filter. Red next, which I thin down with some matte varnish, since red tends to be a pretty powerful colour, and I want to be able to work gradually here. It's all coming together now, I just need that last bit of punch, and orange fluorescent paint will do the trick for me there. And just like that, we're on to detail time. 90% of that work is edges, a million edges, all highlighted, and sometimes up to three times. But it's pretty relaxing work, so no complaints from me. I'll take this opportunity to indulge in a little thankfulness and call out all my wonderful patrons. Let's scroll them across the screen now. These folk make keeping the channel going possible. I can't tell you how grateful I am for their support. I took the time to set up proper tiers and all that now on Patreon too, by the way, so check the links below if you also fancy helping out. It's been a pretty crazy year for me this year, not least because I have a YouTube channel now with over 4,000 subscribers. I won't lie, I did give myself a little bit of the old burnout trying to sustain weekly releases, but it's a really exciting project for me, all this YouTubing. Sharing the hobby and making new friends, it's really great stuff. I have lots of projects planned for the new year and new ideas to explore with you all, so if you aren't already, subscribe below and ring that bell so you can join me and the rest of the community as we expand our miniature horizons. Ok, let's take a look at what we've ended up with. A big old Wraith Knight ready to smash up the foolhardy foes of the mighty Ulthway Space Elves. A relatively quick paint job, but I reckon with that nice tight colour scheme and the silky smooth gradients here and there, he still packs a little punch. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I hope you all have a great end of year and I cannot wait to ring in 2023 with all of you. Cheers!